don't collect vinyl. That's what I said about six months ago when I posted this video about five reasons you might not want to start a vinyl record collection. Today, I'm gonna take a look at some of the many comments from that video and dissect them a little bit. In this video, I'm gonna talk about collecting vinyl itself and some of the comments relating to specifically that term. So I'm set up a little bit different today. I've got my record collection back there. I've got my turntable here. I've got boxes on the floor because well, we're about to move, which is gonna be a huge pain in the ass with all of those things. So let's take a quick look. First up, this one is from T Lister 67. I am more of a listener than collector and probably have more CDs than vinyl. I tend to buy from thrift stores and flea markets. The prices are just too high in record stores. I got 18 records last weekend for about $45. Some are a bit rough, but once cleaned up, play okay through my hi-fi. I am sure my collection is not that valuable, but don't really care. So the distinction T Lister 67 makes is that he is a listener and not a collector. What I'm gathering here is listening and collecting two very different things. Additionally, one thing that he notes and talks about at length is the quality of the vinyl that he does purchase. 18 albums for $45 is roughly about two to three dollars each. So we're not talking about high quality and rare records. We are talking about ones that might be a little bit more run of the mill and at that may have quite a bit of wear to them. But after some cleaning, they seem to play through all right. Next up is Darren Barone 3200. And Darren writes, it used to be about the music. Then Discogs came along and sadly now it's all about collectability. Splattered vinyl, limited editions in 12 versions in every color except black. People don't even open their records. They're too worried to play it as it will affect the value of it. Then you have the low life flippers that sell LPs for five times the price once a pressing sells out. RSD is no longer about supporting independent stores and it is all about cash grab. Meh, I'm out. He makes some really great points. I know personally, I probably have listed items vastly more than they are worth on Discogs, but predominantly I try to keep my listings relatively competitive. Still, he is absolutely right about the inflated prices and how that is something that we've seen a lot on Discogs. But honestly, it's not just Discogs. You see that on Amazon at times. You see it on eBay and other marketplaces out there. It's, it's not something that's new. I've seen that with other industries as well. These kinds of issues are nothing new to the modern world. Still, the record store day thing, the, the scammers, the people who go in and then grab up the good items, turn around and sell them at vastly inflated prices. This is a problem that I think is indicative of the return to popularity that vinyl has had over the last couple years. There's all sorts of data that shows that this is gonna be an ongoing issue. The projection is even showing, I, I believe I, I read this in an article somewhere, that vinyl record industry is going to hit a whopping like $17 billion or something like that over the next five or six years. Let's look at the next one. This one comes from 05008. When I collected vinyl, I listened to less music. I spent too much money. I bought vinyl that I already had on CD. So now I do not consider myself a collector and I now stream. I look at music as something to enjoy rather than collect. I feel more free. I like his mindset or her mindset or their mindset. A listener versus 
a collector. And once again, it's that same thing, listener versus collector, that distinction between the two. It's interesting that they say that they listened to less music when they were a collector. And I wonder if that has something to do with the amount of money spent, the need to preserve it in as pristine quality as possible, and, and so forth. I, I know like personally I consider myself a collector, but when it comes down to it, I am going to listen and listen and listen to all of these records as much as I can because that's something that I really get enjoyment out of. So does that make me a non-collector? Does that make me a listener rather than collector? I, I don't know. I would love to know what your thoughts. Let me know down in the comments. And let's jump on to the next comment. I'm planning on getting rid of my vinyl and taking up stamp collecting takes up less space. You, you gotta love that there's always people who throw in silly little comments like that. Maybe he's not silly, maybe he's actually going to get rid of his turntable and all of his records and start collecting stamps. There's a little bit of ludicrousy to it, right? Like, we spend all this money on these pieces of wax, these commodities, when we could just pay $10 a month and go to Spotify. There's so many different ways that we can listen to music and have so much wider experience where we're not confined to just listening to it in this room. Now, of course, at the same time, I'm sure that most of you people out there still consume music in other ways. So thank you, Toms4442, for that comment. Gave me great amusement there. This person is P. Nichols 6500. One of my main hobbies is listening to music. It's a hobby. I love cleaning and curating records, maintaining my system, and reaping the rewards with glorious sounding music. Sure, you can plop in a CD just like you can eat a store bought tomato, but it's not the same at all to me. P. Nichols 6500 makes a really great point here as well. Hobby of listening to music versus collecting. I think that's one of the reasons I really love vinyl is it's the experience, right? You can buy a store-bought tomato and eat it, but it's not as rewarding as cultivating the earth planting the seed, watering it, doing all of that stuff to actually grow the plant yourself and have and harvest the tomato yourself. There's something about that experience, even though it's vastly more expensive when you consider the time, the effort, the water, and everything you need to grow it from the earth than just getting it store-bought from a mass-produced farm. Vinyl is the same way. It's the experience of taking the vinyl off the shelf, pulling it out, seeing and feeling the artwork, being able to smell the inserts. Hopefully your collection isn't covered in mold if you're doing that. I know personally I love the smell of freshly printed inserts from vinyl. It just, it takes me back to my childhood. And the final one I'm gonna touch on today, Donovan Gill 3138 and he just, he just posted this one just a day ago and he says, I have no interest in collecting vinyls. Z vinyls with an S. I just want to listen to specific styles of music in a more natural way. Once again, collecting. So I guess when it comes down to it, the question I have is, how do you distinguish yourself in the mix with your collection? Do you consider yourself a collector, a hobbyist, a listener? or something else. Personally, my take is this. I collect vinyl. I collect it. I seek out the records that I want. I purchase the records I want. I try not to have stuff I don't like in my collection. I listen to it. I It's, it's also a hobby. So I, I feel like, personally, I fit into all three categories. I'm a listener, I'm a hobbyist, and I am a collector. What are you and why? Let me know down in the comments. Next, if you haven't seen that video yet, check out this video right here where I share five reasons you might not want to start a vinyl record collection. And this one down here where I share five reasons I absolutely love collecting vinyl and why you should start a collection. 
I am Andy, this is The Fence Post, my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.